Hello ladies and gentlemen, security Buff here bringing you another Minecraft World War II vehicle tutorial. And this tutorial will be going ahead and building the Yeg Tiger, which translates to Hunting Tiger. Uh, this is the common name of a German turretless heavy tank destroyer of World War II. The official designation was Panzerjäger Tiger Off B as it was based on the Lengthen Tiger II chassis. The Ordnance Inventory designation was SDKFZ-186. The 71 ton Yeg Tiger was the heaviest armored fighting vehicle used operationally during World War II and is the heaviest armored vehicle of any type to achieve series production. The vehicle carried a 128mm Pack 44 L-55 main gun capable of outranging and defeating any allied tank. It saw service in small numbers from late 1944 to the end of the war on both the western and eastern front. Although 150 were ordered, only between 70 and 88 were produced. Due to an excessive weight, the Yeg Tiger was continuously plagued with mechanical problems. Today, three Yeg Tigers survive in museums. Uh, so the Yeg Tiger itself is a amazing tank destroyer. Uh, you know, I say this about every tank, but every tank is, you know, awesome or cool in its own way, at least to me personally. Uh, but the Yeg Tiger, just for its sheer size, this thing was an absolute beast of a tank. Uh, obviously weighing 71 tons, it was absolutely gigantic. Now, what really made this tank so heavy was how much armor it had on it. The armor was ridiculous, ranging from 250 millimeters of armor to 80 millimeters. That's insane. That is a crazy amount of armor. And uh, this thing from the front, you know, slightly angled, anything like that, nothing is going to be penetrating this thing. This thing, this thing was basically uh, indestructible to for the Allies uh, with their tanks. Uh, so it's overall a crazy, awesome vehicle, and uh, really nice to finally get to and redesign. Now, after redoing my Tiger II chassis, I thought, you know what, my, or basically my Tiger II, uh, I decided, you know what, uh, chassis, you know, I could take this and make a new Yeg Tiger, and uh, that's what I did, and it came out really awesome, and I'm really happy with the way it uh, looks overall. Um, so, going ahead and uh, taking a look at it, you can see we have the same kind of camouflage pattern as the Tiger II, just wanted to kind of keep it uh, consistent, and I uh, figured that, you know, if the Tiger II has the camouflage like this, then I imagine the Yeg Tiger can have it as well. Obviously, you can do your own camouflage on it, and like we did with the Tiger II, we're going to be building it all in uh, basically a tan color uh, before we get started with doing a camouflage on it. Um, so start off with, we have obviously the main gun here. This is the 128mm main gun. Um, you know, obviously... You know, pretty big gun, uh, you know, not a very long barrel, but definitely very strong. Doesn't need it. This thing's going to just tear through when they get shot at. Uh, we have over here basically the um, case around the turret. I think it's called a case, mate. I don't remember 100% sure what it's called. But it's basically part of the hull and just uh, encloses the um, gun breach and all that stuff and protects it. Uh, the yeah, on top on the back here, you have a mounted machine gun. Um, this was... Uh, featured on some Yeg Tigers as probably a uh, way to just add a little bit more anti-infantry protection, I guess you can say, or a little bit of like front forward assault uh, capabilities. Uh, but the machine gun itself uh, just kind of mounted here. It's not a fix there. It could obviously probably be removed or added on when needed. Uh, but I decided to include it because I did on the last Yeg Tiger and I thought it'd be, I thought it's a kind of a cool little attachment and stuff like that on the back. Um, so you guys can feel free to add that if you guys want. Um, on the top here we have the uh, obviously the top of the hole, radio antenna, uh, the sides and tracks and all that stuff, same thing as the Tiger uh, 2. Also on the back here the same thing as the Tiger 2, um, you know, just building up the, uh, basically this, you know, same hole and all that stuff. And the only thing really different here is this, uh, you know, gun case up on top here and uh, all that stuff. So anyways, overall really awesome uh, vehicle came out really good. I'm overall really happy with it and hope you guys uh, can enjoy it as well. Uh, you know, have a few new German vehicles I've been kind of working on redesigning and some older tutorials. So, uh, you know, Yay Tiger was one of those and maybe we'll start to see a few more coming out. Uh, but other than that, let's go and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first set of layers, layers 0 through 1. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving on to our first layer, set of layers, we have layers 0 through 1. Uh, these layers, we're going to basically get the track set up and um, all that stuff ready to go. So, uh, to begin with, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of two of nether brick slabs, so 1 and 2. We're then going to place down two uh, nether brick top slabs coming off those two nether brick slabs going toward the front there, uh, like so. After that, we're going to place down a row of two of... Uh, sandstone or uh, smooth sandstone blocks like this we're going to go ahead and go to the side place down an item frame smooth sandstone block and a stone button on the, coming off the side of these blocks 
Uh, we're then going to place down a smooth sandstone block like this on the inside here. So this on the right side. So the outside is over here of the tank. This is going to be in the inside here. Uh, we're then going to place down a wither skeleton skull coming off this smooth sandstone block. And then in the ground, we're going to place down a nether brick block like so for the tracks. Uh, when that's done there, we're going to repeat this uh, three more times. So we're going to create kind of like the road wheels and all that stuff running down the tracks here. So we're going to do the same design here uh, three more times and just go ahead and kind of continue to work this down. Um, so it's the same design that we just did there for the wheels. As you can see, we're just going to be copying this design down the uh, line here. And uh, we have our third uh, section here. So we have a total of three so far. And then we're going to go ahead and go to our last one, which is a fourth uh, set here. And just like this on the side here, with our skeleton skull. And once you have that done, the last thing we want to do uh, for to kind of complete the road wheels and all that stuff is place down one more row of two, uh, just like we've been doing. Stone button, item frame, smooth sands, don't block like that. And you should get something that looks just like this for your road wheels, like so. Once that's done, we're going to place down your row of two narrow brick slabs, followed by two narrow brick top slabs after those narrow brick slabs. Once that's done, we're going to go to our narrow brick slabs here. We're going to place down a row of three of sandstone top slabs. We're going to go ahead and also go to the front here and place down a row of three of sandstone top slabs. Come off this row of two narrow brick slabs. Uh, we're going to go ahead and basically take our sandstone slabs and fill in the space in between these rows of three of top slabs like this to create the bottom portion here of the hull uh, of the tank. Uh, when that's done there, on the back here, we're going to go, and go to the center um, sandstone top slab. We're going to place down a stone brick top slab back, followed by a wither skeleton skull coming off of it like that. Once that's done, we're going to, go and take our tracks and copy the same design we did over on the right side over here to the left side. So I'm going to go and do this a little bit quicker since we've already kind of covered exactly what to do for this. And we're just copying the same thing we did over there. Um, so I'm going to do it a little bit quicker. If you need to, you can pause the video or, uh, you know, build and keep up if you're able to. Uh, but just the same design all the way down here like so and our wither skeleton skulls and we are good to go um, so we have our row wheels right there last thing for us to do is to take our narrow brick slabs place down a row of two back here followed by a row of two narrow brick top slabs and once you have that done you should get a base that looks something like this uh, for the whole of the tank and when that's all complete, that's going to do it for layers zero for one. With that, let's go ahead and move on to layer two. All right, guys, so real quick before we move on to layer two, I just want to go ahead and let you guys know about a minor kind of design change I went ahead and did on the egg tiger between layers. Uh, after kind of further uh, review of it, I decided to go ahead and opt out of having the kind of side panels over here on this side. Um, I feel like the egg tiger's kind of more had the tracks exposed, at least in a lot of pictures I saw, it kind of seems to be a little bit of a toss up. Uh, but I decided to go ahead and go with the exposed tracks to kind of keep a little bit more different from the Tiger 2. Uh, if you do want to have kind of like the covers over the tracks and stuff, you can refer back to my Tiger 2 uh, tutorial that I did to kind of get an insight on how to do that. But for this, I'm going to be doing it a little bit different and I think it'll uh, definitely make the egg tiger stand out a little bit. So that's what I went ahead and did, um, and we're gonna be going ahead and going with that design. Again, if you wanna do the Tiger 2 design, you can refer back to my Tiger 2 tutorial, which is the tutorial I posted right before this one. So feel free to check that one out. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to layer two. For layer two, we're gonna go ahead and start off by taking our sandstone stairs. We're gonna place down a row of two of upside down sandstone stairs over these narrow brick slabs like this for the um, front fenders. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here. So two upside down sandstone stairs here on both sides. We're then going to take signs, put them on the side of these sandstone stairs and also on the back of the stairs like so. Um, again, also be uh, sure to uh, remember that we are going to be going ahead and doing the tank all in a sandstone uh, color or paint scheme to begin with for uh, basically a tan camo scheme. And then you guys can go back and add the camouflage, which we'll be doing at the end of the tutorial. So uh, if you're just wondering why we're doing it all in tan and not doing the camo, we will, we will be coming back to that uh, shortly. Anyways, uh, to go ahead and continue on, in the front here, we're going to take our sandstone stairs, place down a row of three regular stairs in between these sandstone upside down stairs for the fenders. We then want to take our smooth sandstone blocks, place down a row of seven all the way across here on both ends. We're going to place down a stone button and an item frame with a cobweb in the item frame for the sprocket wheels. Same thing over here on this side, like so. After that's done, we're going to take our uh, narrow brick slabs. We're going to go ahead and place down one and two narrow brick top slabs back. Followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine narrow brick slabs back. We're gonna do the same thing over here. Two narrow brick top slabs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine narrow brick slabs back. 
Uh, with that all done, we're going to go and take our sandstone blocks, smooth sandstone, and we can place down a row of uh, 11 of smooth sandstone blocks along these narrow brick slabs. And we can do the same thing over here on this side as well. If you want to, you can choose to go ahead and fill uh, that all in completely. So you can go and choose to fill this uh, whole space in completely. But if you are doing some kind of interior, then you can leave it open to do the interior. Um, just to kind of keep the build consistent and clean it up, we're going to go and just fill it in completely uh, like this all the way through. Now with that all done, we're going to go and take our smooth sandstone blocks and in the middle here, we're going to also place down a row of three that goes across. So a nice thick row of five of sandstone, smooth sandstone blocks that goes across here. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves sandstone stairs, come off the narrow brick slab and the first smooth sandstone block here on both ends. We're going to place down two sandstone stairs like this to represent the back fenders. Uh, when that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, granite block on both ends, a polished granite block. And in between them, we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate. Now, depending on what Minecraft version you're on, you might need to break that Wither Skeleton Skull and place down a block underneath it to get the fence gate to go. Um, or if you're on some of the newer versions, you can just place the fence gate, um, which if you can, you're very lucky. Uh, anyways, you want this on the back here like so. We're then going to place down a Wither Skeleton Skull, come out these two polished andesite blocks. And with that all done, that is going to wrap up layer uh, number two. And with that, we can move on to our next layer, layer number three. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving on to our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to begin with, we are going to go ahead and start off by placing down two wooden trapdoors on top of these two uh, sandstone upside down stairs. Uh, when that's done there for the front fenders, we're going to place down a sandstone stair here in the middle of this row of seven of smooth sandstone blocks. So just a sandstone stair in there in the middle. We then want to place down a uh, sandstone stair to the left and then over here to the right, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone block. Uh, with that all done there, we're going to place down a end rod coming off this smooth sandstone block over here on the right side for the hull mounted machine gun. We then want to go ahead and place down an item frame coming off the center sandstone stair. After that, we're going to place down a glass block and then a sign uh, coming off the sandstone stair like that for the little headlight here up in the front. We then want to place down a sandstone stair to both sides. So one coming off this sandstone stair here and one coming off, off this uh, smooth sandstone block. And then on the, each uh, sandstone stair on the ends here, we're going to place down a sandstone corner stair like that to round off the whole armor. When that's done, we're going to place down a sandstone stair that goes back from the corner stair here on both ends. In the middle space, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone block directly in the middle, followed by a birchwood plank to both sides. And then right next to that birchwood plank, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone block. Uh, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of one, uh, or basically one sandstone stair back. So one sandstone back on both sides here, and then a row of five of smooth sandstone blocks across. Uh, from that, on the sides here, we're going to go back one, two, and three sandstone stairs. Go over here, we're do the same thing, one, two, and three sandstone stairs. We then want to take cobblestone walls. We're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, and six cobblestone walls back. Same thing over here, a row of one, two, three, four, five, and six cobblestone uh, walls back like so. Uh, with that all done, we're going to go ahead and place down uh, basically smooth sandstone blocks along the back of these stairs and also back here to these cobblestone walls. We're going to do this back here on both sides like this. Uh, again, if you do want to do have some interior space, all you need to do is uh, basically close off this back portion. So you're going to go ahead and go to your third cobblestone wall back, place down a row of smooth sandstone across in between it, and you can fill in this space completely. Uh, this will be kind of like the back here, obviously the back of the tank there, and you can have some interior space to work on if you guys want to. Uh, if not, you can go ahead and just fill this all in completely and call it good to go for um, that. Uh, when we get to the back here, we also want to go ahead and go to the middle blocks here. So we do want to go ahead and adjust these a bit here. We're going to go ahead and go to this uh, smooth sandstone block, block, break this one and this one right here. We're going to place down two cobblestone walls in its place. Uh, we also want to go ahead and take our birchwood planks. We're going to place down a birchwood plank here on both sides of this first cobblestone wall, uh, like so. Once that's done, on the back here, we're going to take our sandstone stairs. We're going to place down a sandstone upside down stair like this on the side, followed by a sign coming off of it. We then want to grab ourselves a birchwood fence gate and place down a birchwood fence gate also coming off this sandstone uh, stair from the front there like that. Once that's done, right next to it, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick uh, stair, upside down stair like this. And then come off the stair, we can place down an iron frame and grab ourselves maybe like an axe or some kind of random iron tool and place it down like that to show kind of a spare tool mount on the back here. We then want to place down a row of one and two sandstone upside down stairs over and then a birchwood, or sorry, a smooth sandstone block over here on the right side. Come off the smooth sandstone block, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate and to the side of the birch, uh, the smooth sandstone block, we're going to place down a uh, 
wooden sign like this on the side here. Last thing for us to do for this layer is to go ahead and grab ourselves some uh, acacia wood fence posts. And we're going to place down an acacia wood fence post on top of these two wither skeleton skulls like that, which will be part of our um, exhaust uh, when we complete it in the next layer. Anyways, once you have that all complete, that is going to do it for layer 3, and with that we can move on to layer number 4. Alright guys, so real quick before we move on to layer 4, I want to go ahead and cover one thing we need to go ahead and add. And I think I actually forgot this on the Tiger 2 tutorial as well. Uh, but basically we want to go ahead and go to this row of 5, a smooth sandstone block, so right after the birchwood planks here for the hatches. Uh, we're going to place down a cobblestone wall on this middle smooth sandstone, or in the middle smooth sandstone uh, block, so we're going to replace it with the cobblestone wall and you should get something that kind of looks like that. I think again that's something I forgot with the Tiger 2 so uh, you know I still you think doing this same chassis two times I would have got it but uh, apparently not. Anyways let's go ahead and continue on to layer 4. So for layer 4 we're going to start off by going ahead and going to the row of 5 of smooth sandstone right after this cobblestone wall row and we're going to place down a row of 5 of smooth sandstone on top of it. When that's done coming off the center smooth sandstone block toward the front of the tank we're going to place down a uh, sandstone up down the stair. Coming off the sandstone upside on the stair, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, uh, and actually 9 sandstone top steps going forward like so. Uh, with that done, we're going to go ahead and uh, come back and do the details right here next to these hatches. So on top of each of one of these birchwood planks, we're going to place down a stone button. We also want to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater to the side here of these birchwood planks on the smooth sandstone block with their notches flicked out to the sides, and that'll do it there for your uh, detail in this area. Going ahead and continuing on, we're going to take our smooth sandstone blocks, place down 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Smooth sandstone blocks back, same thing over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So you have a row of 6 here on the side. Uh, when we get to the back section here, we're going to place down a row of 3 birchwood planks in between these smooth sandstone blocks. And then uh, coming off the birchwood planks, we're going to grab ourselves a stone button and also a lever. We're going to place down a lever coming off the birchwood plank right here, followed by a stone button here on both, on the both birchwood planks to either side. Uh, when that's done there, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves iron rails. We're going to place down a rail on top of these two uh, smooth sandstone blocks. Going ahead and going back from that, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, sandstone slab like this. Uh, and then on the other side here, we're going to go ahead and place down a daylight sensor. We then want to place down again a rail here on both sides, so after the daylight sensor and the sandstone slab. Um, in the middle space here, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, zombie head. You can also use some wither skeleton skulls, whatever you would rather uh, prefer. Uh, but we can place down some wither skeleton skulls right there on top of spoof sandstone blocks. And uh, later on, we could change them uh, when we have our uh, you know camouflage and all that stuff come in. Uh, but then we're going to place down a redstone repeater on this uh, birchwood plank here to the right side. And then over to the left side, we want to go ahead and grab ourselves a iron bar and place down an iron bar on this birchwood plank. On the very back here we can just go ahead and grab ourselves some wooden, uh, wooden pressure plates and place down a row of five across and then we can just place down two wither skeleton skulls on these two birchwood fence gates or sorry fence posts like that to go ahead and complete the exhaust. If you guys are interested in adding this additional MG34 mounted on the back of a tank you can very simply just place down a birchwood fence post like this on this cobblestone wall to go ahead and get the, the MG34 uh, started. Uh, again, you don't have to add it, but it is kind of a cool addition to throw onto the tank. Uh, but uh, obviously, you can add it. Not, if you don't, no worries. Uh, just, you know, uh, skip it when we uh, cover it in future layers. Also, uh, one last thing up here in the front, on either side of the sandstone upside down stair, we're going to place tiny sandstone top slab to both sides. When that's all uh, done there, uh, that's going to... Actually, my bad. It's not a top slab. It's a upside down corner stair. So, upside down corner stair sandstone on both sides like that for the mantle. Uh, with that done, that's going to do it for uh, layer uh, number four, and with that we can move on to layer number five. Alright guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five, we're going to start off by taking our wooden trap doors, and we're going to go ahead and start on this very uh, end sandstone top set for our barrel of our main gun. And we want to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, six wooden trap doors back on these first six sandstone top sets. We then want to place down a lever and flick it backwards like this toward the tank and then we're going to take our wooden trap door, close it if it does decide to open. We're then going to place down a sandstone slab back followed by a sandstone stair on both sides of the sandstone stair. We're going to place down a wither skeleton skull like so. Once that's done behind the stair, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone block followed by a sandstone stair uh, like this on both sides of the smooth sandstone block. Once that's done, we're going to place down a row 3 of smooth sandstone back behind these stairs followed by a sandstone slab here on both sides. Also on the inside here you can see we have the space for interior from the previous layer if you want to you can go and fill it in. 
um, or just leave it empty. It doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, you can just go and do that. Um, then on the sides here, we're going to go and take our sandstone stairs, place down one, two, three, four, and five. Sandstone stairs back, same thing over here, one, two, three, four, and five. Sandstone stairs back like so. Uh, we then want to take our birchwood planks, place down a row of three across the back here. We're going to place down a lever on the middle uh, birchwood plank, flick it downwards to connect with the one on the bottom, and then place down a stone button on both sides here. If you guys want to, you can also go ahead and fill in the space right in here, but you do not need to as we will have a layer on top of it, which will kind of cover it up. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and fill it in to keep consistency like we've been doing for the tutorial. Uh, then going back here, if you're adding the MG34, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate on top of this one right here to continue that birchwood fence gate going up. Anyways, with that all complete, that is going to do it for layer number 5. With that, we'll move on to our last final layers. Layers 6, 7, 8, and 9. We're going to put the radio antenna on top, the MG34 on the top of the, um, the hull. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and move on to our last final layers. Alrighty guys, so going ahead and moving on to our last five layers, we have layers six through eight. So, or sorry, six through nine. So for these layers, to go ahead and get started here, we're gonna start off with the top of the, uh, I guess, hole. Uh, so to get started here, we're gonna place down a wooden trap door on the smooth sandstone block after this sandstone stair here. We then wanna take our sandstone slabs, place down a row of three across here. Over here on the right side, we're gonna place down a sandstone stair like this, followed by a birchwood fence post to the side of that stair. We're then going to place down one and a uh, sandstone slab over, followed by a stone brick slab after it, like that to the side. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a birchwood plank. We're going to place down a birchwood plank after this sandstone stair, and then on top of the birchwood plank, we're going to place down a stone button. We then want to take our sandstone slabs, place down one and two slabs over. Uh, also, on the side here, on this uh, sandstone stair, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull like that, as a bit of like a viewport there for uh, whoever's in the commander's kind of cupola there. Uh, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, wither skeleton skull here in the middle, followed by a sandstone slab to both sides of that wither skeleton skull. Uh, over here on the left side, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a wither skeleton skull at a kind of a slight angle coming off the side there like so. We then want to place down a row of three of sandstone slabs across. We're then going to follow it up by placing down a second row of three. On both sides of this row of three, we're going to go to the sandstone stair here, place down a wither skeleton skull at a slight angle here to both sides as again some kind of viewports there to kind of view around the tank. Uh, when that's all done there, uh, that's going to kind of do it there for the roof of your tank. Also, another thing I'm going to go ahead and throw in real quick to add a little bit more detail to the sides of the uh, kind of like the hole here, where you can go ahead and place down two trip bar hooks here on both ends, like that, as a means of attaching spare tracks or equipment to on the sides there to kind of give a little bit of a visual look to that and uh, just adds a nice little uh, bit of detail to this area, which otherwise was kind of plain. So uh, we can throw in those trip bar hooks and uh, add that detail. Um, anyways, uh, going ahead and continuing on, uh, for the radio antenna here, we're just going to go and grab ourselves some iron bars. We're going to place down one, two, and three iron bars up from this birchwood fence post over there on the right side, and your tank will be pretty much good to go. Now, if you are adding the MG on the back here, we're going to uh, basically build that now. So for this, we're going to need a narrow brick stair, some end rods, a wither skeleton skull, a spruce wood stair, followed by a br uh, spruce wood fence gate, a uh, wooden sign, and also a redstone repeater. So to go ahead and get started here, we're going to go ahead and place down a narrow birchwood uh, fence post on top of this one right here, so we have a total of three going up. We then want to place down a nether brick upside down stair on top of this uh, birchwood fence post with the front of the stair facing toward obviously the front of the tank. After that, we're going to place down a spruce wood stair going back. On the side of this uh, nether brick stair, we're going to place down a wooden sign. After that, uh, we're then going to place down a row of two of end rods coming off this uh, narrow brick upside down stair. Over here on this side of the narrow brick stair, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull. Uh, on this side also, coming off the spruce wood uh, stair, we're going to go and place down a spruce wood fence gate. Coming off the side of the stair here, like so. On top of the stair, we're going to place down a stone button. And then on top of the birch wood, or the narrow brick upside down stair, we're going to place down a red stone appear with his notches flicked back like so. And when you have that all complete, that'll pretty much do it for our MG34 mount on the top there. And uh, that will pretty much, in general, do it for the Yeg Tiger. Uh, overall, really awesome uh, build there. And if you do want to add the camouflage onto it, we will be doing that here shortly. Uh, but if you just want the basic tank and it's tan camouflage, you're going to do your, uh, or the tan color scheme. Uh, or if you guys are going to go ahead and do your own camouflage, where you, you're pretty much good to go. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the camouflage. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving on to putting the camouflage onto the Yeg Tiger. Now, as I mentioned, the camouflage is completely optional, though I do think that the tank looks a lot better with the camouflage. Uh, you know, just standard, it looks good still, but, you know, the camouflage kind of adds that extra bit of detail. 
and really makes the tank kind of come alive, I guess you can say. Now, it's uh, going to be using the same kind of format as my Tiger 2 tutorial, uh, which basically uh, we're not going to do the entire tank. I'm just going to kind of show you guys a general idea of what to do for the camouflage. Uh, so very simply, we're just going to be using a combination of dark oak wood stairs, slabs, um, and green stained clay to make some stripes along with some spruce wood uh, stairs, slabs, planks, and all that stuff to uh, go and kind of complement it. So uh, for the camouflage, we can just go ahead and start by just kind of putting in some random kind of stripes here onto the barrel of the gun. Now note that you really don't have to uh, copy exactly what I'm doing. You can kind of just use this for an idea, a guide to do your own. Um, I actually kind of recommend that you do a different camouflage for each one of your tanks to kind of give them a little bit more, uh, I guess, uh, difference and variation and stuff. It'll look really cool in the end. Uh, but anyways, uh, you know, you can go ahead and just do that for your barrels, uh, you know, make sure that you kind of maybe complement it with on top of the spruce wood uh, the slab there, we put a spruce wood plank and maybe on top of the uh, birch or the dark oak wood right here, we place it on a dark oak wood slab like that. Um, so then coming into this section here, we're going to take our spruce wood and we're going to kind of work this back here a bit of a stripe. So it's going to kind of flow a little bit to the side here. We can have it come down like this. Uh, just note that if you break any blocks that have any, uh, like, you know, trip bar hooks, stone buttons on it, make sure that you go ahead and replace them. And then we can have it kind of come down to this section here. Now, with most of these camouflages, I kind of noticed that the inside, kind of like where the tracks are and the road wheels and all that stuff, weren't really touched by the camouflage. So we're going to leave this completely blank and just straight up tan and just kind of focus on the outside kind of uh, more kind of, <clears throat> I guess, whole portion of the tank rather than this inside section here, which typically wasn't really camouflaged or painted. Um, over. Um, so then when that's done we can maybe have a line of green uh, We're using the dark oak wood green stained clay blocks to kind of come into this section here and flow up this way Which uh, can add a little bit of you know kind of a you know stripe that kind of goes in this section here We can even replace this block right there and uh, then for the front You know we can just place down there dark oak wood line here kind of goes down like this close down here and then maybe have a dark oak wood slab like this and then after that we can maybe do a spruce wood a little kind of segment that goes this way and comes down over here to this side. Uh, basically, the moral of the thing is you kind of want to have a little bit more sandstone still uh, rather than uh, the blocks here. Uh, but obviously, you can kind of you know do what you want. Uh, you can see I'm kind of doing stripes that go across the tank and kind of look like they kind of flow. I guess with the vehicle itself, uh, you do not have to do this. You can you know do like splotches or whatever you want. Um, you know it's completely okay and uh, yeah it's just gonna be kind of doing this kind of pattern going through here we'll go and take some green up this way kind of take it go over the turret casing here maybe wrap it around over to this side oops uh, using dark oak wood of course and then maybe come down this way here and flow down this way and then this kind of brings me to one thing you can also do is to go ahead and take these uh, moss or these cobblestone walls break them place down whatever block you want behind them so green and then we can place down mossy cobblestone walls over that to kind of keep that green kind of color uh, scheme and uh, then we can you know follow up uh, after that row there with some spruce wood kind of going up here for the next line and then this will go up here so we can take our spruce wood kind of go over around here like this you know continue it around over here to this side and then come down this way like so and that right there is pretty much a main idea of how the camouflage is kind of done on it uh, you guys can obviously feel free to do something different. Feel free to use it as an inspiration and all that stuff. You can look at the other tank here, the other model, uh, and kind of see what I did here for it as well. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much going to kind of wrap up the camouflage and in return, wrap up the tutorial for the redesign for the Gig Tiger. Anyways, hope you guys do enjoy this build and are able to put it, put it to good use. If you guys do end up using this design, do I see you guys give me proper credit for it? This can be from a silent build, tweet to my channel, or this video if this does appear to social media sites. Just be sure you get proper credit for the build. That's all I ask for. Do these tutorials, it helps my channel grow and I get to use to keep me inspired to keep on posting this type of content. So, as long as you guys give me credit for it, you're free to use it for whatever project you guys are working on. And that, thank you guys all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary204, and I'll see you guys next time.